Hey, what's going on, folks? Clutch here. And this might be the last North American map for Farming Sim 19 that we see. We'll have to talk about that a little bit. Got lots to show you. Very cool map. This is Red River Valley. We'll show it off right now. Bitter batter. So first things first, this is a standard size map, PC only for Farming Simulator 19. It's still in alpha or maybe beta stage currently. Coming out very soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we should see this map ready for release. This is yet another map done by DJ Modding. You might recognize his name from uh, Upper Mississippi River Valley, Oklahoma 4X. You've got somewhere in Canada. You've also got Deer Country. Now the map is based on the border. Actually, it's not just one border. In fact, it's a several borders. We've got Minnesota to the east, North Dakota to the west, and Manitoba, Canada to the north. That's right, guys. You're between three different borders of North Dakota, Minnesota, and Canada, Manitoba, Canada. So you've got a lot of different little areas you can actually access that are all kind of separate. Now, on top of that, you're going to get obviously more than one town. This map technically includes three and a half towns I'm going to go with. First of all, well, we're above Canada right now. This is the city of Emerson, Manitoba. Uh, it, well, it's a standard size Canadian city. You got a couple cell points and you got the tracks, as you can see, walking right through the middle there. And you got a fire department going right there as well. Uh, there are some farms down on the southern side here and one farm up to the north as well. Now, just north of Emerson, there is another small town just up here by some cell points. It's not technically a separate town. This is still Emerson, I believe, but it's a whole kind of separate little area. You got some houses and some cell points right in here that kind of make it feel like its own separate little area, mind you. Let's bounce over to the American side. So on the Minnesota side, we have the city or town of St. Vincent. Uh, once again, similar in size to the Canadian city there, but we've got some more buildings for the fire department. You've got a couple different buildings you can enter, uh, mostly the emergency service type buildings, which we'll show off a little bit more in a bit because they're pretty good for role plays type stuff. And as you cross the bridge into North Dakota, you're into the town of Pembina. And this is probably the largest city. This is where your main store is located. There also is a centralized football field right in the middle. But yeah, the main store is the Case dealership right there. That's where you're going to get all your equipment. Your vehicles are right behind there. Fire department, once again, is accessible right in the back there. But you've got Train Yard, kind of the biggest city of all of them in the uh, on the map itself is right here in Pembina. Now, before we get into farms, we need to talk about what kind of makes this map unique. Now, like I said, we're on three different borders, but most notably, we're on an international border, which means we have an international border crossing. We just crossed over the American crossing and the main highway in here, you're going to see the Canadian border crossing. The buildings are the same, but we can go inside these buildings and you're going to see that they're quite unique as well. You can access right inside of them. Once again, great for role play type series stuff and vehicles will actually come through this border as well and kind of stop, wait for the gate to go up. So that's the main highway border crossing. We also have, well, a secondary highway border crossing down on the easterly side. And once again, it's very similar. You have to go through a gate and actually you'll watch here as this vehicle goes in and pulls in, gate will open and it will allow him to cross. Now, of course, you're wondering what happens when you cross the border. Well, this is something totally different to farm sim. You get a little message and we're going to show it to you right here, right now. And you're going to get a whole set of options here on what you're supposed to do. It's all for role play. You don't actually have to do any of this, but you can read through the top right there. It'll tell you what you're supposed to do. Pull in, go in and talk to the border security agent, and then you should be able to good to go. But you don't need to. We can just carry on. There's no there's no fines. There's nothing along those lines uh, as of right now, at least. I mean, that would be kind of interesting if we had some like a tax system. If you were bringing some kind of goods across the border, it could be kind of cool. Is there a way we can make that happen? All right. So I've talked about the towns. Like I said, technically three towns, three and a half towns ish, as you can see by the PDA right here. Let's take a look. We've got 37 fields. Uh, none of them are very square. It's all fairly flat, but none of the fields are very square. As you can see, pretty much every single field here is kind of a distinct shape, which I do appreciate, I have to admit. Now you can see right in the middle, there's your Canada-US border. And then down the Red River, that is the border between North Dakota and Minnesota. So you can see all the borders there and you actually have a meet up there. Now there's only two ways to cross into Canada technically from the US. You have the main highway on the west and you have the secondary highway here on the east. Train tracks are running, well, basically from, was that Sultan? Sultan? Right at the bottom corner there. And they run right through the Canadian town and then back all the way up to the north. Now, there are farms located around the map. We'll look at some of them. They're not all labeled yet. Like I said, this is still technically an alpha or beta. Things will change, especially with the farmyard layouts and that kind of stuff. 
that can still change quite a bit. Uh, farms are not really labeled all that great yet. They're still in the process of being done, so we'll go through some of them and just take a look around. And since we're on the Canadian side, let's start with one of the larger farms on the map. This is over on the easterly side of the Canadian town. You've got a cattle operation here. It's one of the larger, larger farms, like I said. Uh, over to this left side, you can see we've got the cattle operation. In the back are their massive silo operation, which also has a corn dryer, guys. That corn dryer works with global companies, just so you know. And you've got some outbuildings, of course, as well as some silos built right in here. All the farmlands down past to the east of this, of course, will belong probably to this farm. Now, off to the west side of the Canadian farm areas, you've got two smaller farms up here that you can use. Off to the right, there's a small, very small farm, just a one outbuilding and uh, some farm areas. And then if we keep on going, you've got a pig up there along with another farm off to the left there. So that's kind of all one farm, just separated by a little bit of a road. I mean, you don't want your pigs too close to your house, do you? <laughs> but that there pretty much is it for the Canadian side, guys. As soon as we cross this tree line here, we are over onto the American side. The American border is kind of off to the left there. And everything in this direction now, you can see the two towns in the distance with the American side. You can see there's no roads across up here, actually. I mean, you can, of course, get through fields if you need to. But there's only the two main highways that kind of connect the two areas. You can see even the river does a little bit of a job in that, but you've got some small farm roads even that come to an end before they cross the border into Canada. Kind of interesting. Now, as we follow the river towards the two towns, we're on the North Dakota side. This is the only farm on the North Dakota side right here. It's actually kind of an interesting farm, kind of long and narrow and just kind of skirts along the river. It's close to town, though, which is kind of nice as well, especially since your main dealership is in this town. And then everything around here, I mean, this farmlands would probably belong to this farm if you want to make it that way. But there's no other farmlands on the North Dakota side. If we keep on going this direction, you're going to find we got a BGA up at the top here. And it's just hidden in the top corner of the map. This is your standard BGA, everything you'd expect to find right here. Now, the Minnesota side itself has a few more farms, not a lot. I think there's two that we can have access to, maybe three. Uh, we have a small one here that's actually really close to town. And as we keep on heading down to the east, you're going to find there's one, possibly two more farms down on the far corners of the map here. So we have two more farms down here. One, once again, is just an outbuilding with a silo. The other is more of a full-fledged farm. Once again, we do have some animals on this one with silos. So this would be a more generous farm. And maybe that would just be a, an annex or part of that farm. But you could always make that into another farm if you wanted. Now, one thing DJ Modding does do is a ton of different sell points and really gives you options to sell products on your map. Well, here is one of them, one of the sell, the train silo areas where you can sell your goods to, which is kind of off oh, out of town, basically out in the middle of the fields, out near your farmlands. Not a lot of them like this, though. This is one of the few. Well, there are, are a couple, such as this root crop vegetable sell point right here as well. So there are a couple, but the majority of them you're going to find in the various towns around the map. As you can see, well, we've got a couple right in front of us. Uh, as we scroll around, a lot of the businesses will have cell points built right into them, right in the back. You can see that some of them right here, you can see there's one right in the back side of this, this little uh, commercial complex right here. And the same can be said as we cross onto the North Dakota side, you've got cell points in behind all the businesses. Uh, a lot of the businesses will have cell points built into them. It's kind of a nice way of doing things. I really do like that. Makes you good use of the town sites. Now, as far as crop types go, nothing too, too crazy here. We still have all, all the general usuals, of course, but we also have, uh, we got alfalfa and of course the dried corn, which like I said before, requires global companies to run that dryer, but it does have dried corn, which you can make quite a profit on looking at these prices. Holy smokes, that's a lot of money. Now, once again, it will be compatible with seasons, will be compatible with maize plus and strami. However, those still need to be adjusted. That's some of the work that still needs to happen to this map. It has not been done yet, but everything else for the most part is very well done. We, like I said, we should be able to see this in a few weeks as a release. Some of the other things, like I said, the farmlands still need to be created. There's some decorations that still need to be done that he wants to work on. Some dirt textures. You guys get it. There's a lot of things, little tiny finishing details that need to happen to this map. But for the most part, it's currently even playable right now. So this is definitely an interesting map. It has some interesting features. This border is something that no one has done before. It's kind of an interesting concept in Farm Sim. And the amount of detail in some of the buildings really makes this... Well, quite an interesting map to consider. If you are into role-playing farm sim at all, there's quite a few options inside certain buildings. For instance, well, if we just open up our, our border crossing here, you can see we have, well, a fully textured and enterable building. And along with all of the border crossing buildings, all the fire department buildings, well, they're enterable as well and have, well, all sorts of, of little knickknacks and cool design options built right into them. 
a lot of which I honestly have not seen before. This is all new to me. There's quite a few buildings actually you can get inside. And if you're into the RP type stuff, this could really change up uh, some of the options available to you. So there you have it, folks. That's Red River Valley by DJ Modding. What do you guys think of this map? Is this something you're interested in playing? I'll put a poll down below, actually, and uh, let me know in the comments. Does this rank in your top 10 maps for Farm Sim 19? How about top 10 North American maps? This is a very interesting map, and I'm kind of interested to see what you guys think of it. There's some always some interesting stuff that comes from DJ Modding as far as some of the new stuff he tries. Uh, this might be that last north american map we see for farm sim 19 what do you guys think of this one let me know down in the comments below but other than that folks i hope you guys enjoyed this quick preview of this brand new map you'll be seeing a lot more of this map on the channel here soon don't forget to slap the like and of course do subscribe if you have done so already so you don't miss any of the farm sim content coming out here in the very near future other than that folks have a great day we will catch you next time this is clutch from bread river valley over and out